Hi, I'm Keith Ingram, the developer of Analog Watch. Uh, Analog Watch is a collection of tools and libraries that are crafted to empower you in publishing, indexing, and retrieving data from analog supported chains. And it includes the Watch API, the Watch SDK, and the Watch UI, each of which serves a distinct role. So today I'll be walking you through the Watch UI in this demo. Uh, the main features of the Watch UI currently are the ability to define data, which can be smart contracts and then collections and views built on top of them, and also browsing through the data that exists already in our library. So you've probably heard about how DeFi activities enable billions of dollars worth of trades across various blockchains. And a lot of these activities take place on DEXs, which creates siloed amounts of on-chain data that often result in really big price discrepancies for assets across different DEXs. But uh, one use case of watch is that you can now compute accurate price discoveries for assets across these DEXs. And by aggregating price feeds from multiple DEXs, your users get to receive the best possible price for their assets, regardless of the token they're trading. So for the demo, we're going to dive into a practical example of this use case using watch. So the first step as a developer using watch is to connect a wallet. This is what lets you kind of create your own data views and collections on top of the different smart contracts that are available. So currently we support pretty much any Polkadot or Substrate wallet, which will work. And you'll be prompted to answer a few onboarding questions if you like. All right, from here, we come to the, so after we connect our wallet, we come to the library page. And this is sort of the central point where you can browse all the data that's available on analog, essentially. So you can filter by types, so you can view different smart contracts or the different data collections and data views as well. And you can also filter by different categories and search for specific items if we like. So to show a practical example of how watch can be used to aggregate uh, different DEX data, I'm going to show an example use case of getting the average price of Ethereum across two different DEXs, in this case, Uniswap and Curve. So if we navigate to the Uniswap contract here, we wrapped Ethereum in USDT. Um, we can view different collections that already exist, and these are Collections are essentially, they record the value of a smart contract call over time. And if we look here, we can see the different functions that are available from this particular contract. Now, for this use case, the one that interests us is slot zero. And this is essentially, on Uniswap, this is a call that aggregates a lot of useful data in one call to reduce gas fees. And it includes square root price x96. And this is a value that can be essentially modified in order to get the current value of the asset in question. So in this case, wrapped Ethereum to USD. So to create a new collection, we click on this button here. And so on this page, we can see on the left, all the different functions that are available to us. So we pick slot zero here, and then we give it a name that'll be sort of a unique identifier for it on the underlying backend system. And then here we can rename the different fields if we wish. I think we'll probably just leave them as they are. And then this definition is what is actually deployed to the time graph. And this essentially just defines what smart contract method call is executed. And in the future, this will have additional customizations. We can define a particular cadence, like how often we want this particular collection to be updated. So. All right, so when we create a new collection on Watch, we're prompted to give it a name and a description. This is to aid other developers who are searching for it using this interface. So let's just call this swap v3 slot zero. We can also add any uh, categories or tags that we like. So for example, if we want to create a new one right here, we can do that. And also a description. So So here on the page for our collection that we just created, you can view the identifying information up here. You can also see the smart contract that it was created from, um, the publisher, in this case, our account. 
And then this hash ID is sort of the unique identifier for this collection on the time graph. This is used in several different places like the API and the SDK if you want to query data from this collection in particular. And uh, here we see information about the tasks. These are essentially just the processes that are in charge of querying this, current, this contract method and keeping it up to date. And um, in the future, we'll have a lot more control over how often these are executed. And uh, there'll be a lot more sort of fine-grained ways to, to fine-tune that to your particular use case. And uh, here we can see the data that's being collected. So only one cycle so far in this case, but these are all the different values that are returned from the slot zero collection that we defined. All right, so now I'm gonna create another collection to sort of collect the equivalent information from Curve. So we navigate to the Curve smart contract that we wanna query. And in this case, what we'll be doing is calling get dy. And in this particular collection, we actually have to provide a few arguments. So we'll just fill all this out. And in this particular case, these uh, token IDs that we want are 0, 2, and then dx will be 1. So essentially, this is just the, um, the price for exchanging one unit of wrapped Ethereum for USDT. So we'll just go through the process of creating a name, description, and tags like before. All right, so now that we've created a couple of different collections that are retrieving data, uh, we can go look at our profile page here. And this just displays basic information like our current wallet balance. And we can also look at uh, all the different collections or views that we've deployed to this point. So now that we have these two collections defined, we can go to the view builder page. And this is where we can sort of define a custom view using both of these collections and retrieve the price average across Uniswap and Curve. So in sort of its most simple form, um, this page lets you just choose different collections and then it will auto-generate an SQL statement over here. And sort of the default behavior is to just retrieve all the different columns and however many collections you've chosen and just display them side by side effectively. But um, since this is an SQL statement, you can edit it to essentially do whatever sort of work you want. So the first step is to give our view a new unique identifier. So at any time while we're working on one of these views, um, we can easily test run this SQL statement to see what the shape of the return data will be. So in this case, we can see that it will have these headers and this is these are just three like the most recent data points that we that would be returned just to give you an idea of how the data would be formatted all right so to do our custom uh computation getting the average price of ethereum across both of these exchanges we can just we'll just quickly paste in what this sql statement would be so effectively, this is just doing the operation on square root price x96 from Uniswap and the uh, value of get dy from curve and just averaging the two out. Pretty, pretty basic. So here we can see what the return data will be. And this includes the uh, cycle, which is an internal uh, time graph measurement, and then block, which is referring to the block on the respective on the relevant chain and average, which is the value that we want. All right, so once we have a view that looks good, that has what we want, we can just deploy it. Very similar to deploying a collection. Um, so we can give this a unique name. Uh, edit the categories if we want to. And uh, I'll just give it a quick description.
So now that we've created this view, we can go to the page for it where we see sort of the same information, uh, the publisher, the hash ID, the definition, which includes the SQL statement that we just pasted in. And we can see that it's already collecting data. So once we have this set up, we can easily query this view for our particular use case, whether that be a dApp or whether or something else. And um, just providing this hash ID to the SDK or in the GraphQL endpoint will let you query this, these data points as you need to. So that concludes our demo of uh, Analog Watch, just a very simple use case showing how you can sort of really efficiently and effectively query data across multiple chains. Um, it's designed to be sort of a one-stop resource for blockchain data, regardless of whether you're working on a DeFi app or an NFT marketplace or whatever the case may be.